United States government desires to build a wagon road through the Powder River District to the settlement of Bozeman. The road will run from Fort Laramie, across the Little Piney, and... No! These hunting grounds, my people, home of bear, elk, buffalo, are means of living. If you try, take our land, I kill every white man. Small detachment, less than 20. Rebels? There aren't any more rebels. They surrendered a long time ago. Ah, oh, them rebels, all right. They're armed, still in uniform. Probably looking for trouble. They've spotted us. I'd say they're a part of Joe Shelby's Missourians. The rebels who wouldn't surrender? Right, miss. Renegades never did surrender. Western Indians, she asked me. That's enough, Riley. We're not looking for a fight. Yank. And we can't even shoot at him. War's over, Dave. Pretty good looking outfit, that. Yeah. And they've got a wagon of ammunition that should be easy to take. Understand, from now on, anything we take from anybody, we pay for it. You mean we're going to waste good hard money on that sort of fellow? Hey, just thank you. You take charge here while I write down. Oh, but I'd better go along. No, I'll go by myself so it won't look like an attack. Two of them are riding down here. And for no good, believe me. We've got our orders, Riley. Avoid trouble. Remember that and don't stick your head out. Did you hear me say I didn't want anybody with me? Why, well, nobody? I just told it. I was going in case just like always. <laughs> you men, come up here by the ammunition wagon. Keep your eye on it in case of trouble. You ain't have that outfit joining up with us. I ain't getting our way, understand? Mm. Good day, ma'am. Nice weather we're having. Quiet, Ginger. Good afternoon, sir. What do you want? I saluted you, sir. I don't salute rebels. Who are you? Captain John Morgan, Confederate States of America. You mean the late Confederate States. I'm under the impression the South surrendered. Submitted, you mean? The word is... Surrendered. I never surrendered, Lieutenant. And what's more, we never will. Take my advice and put this man and his outfit under arrest. And take my advice, Lieutenant. My men would enjoy someone making that mistake. Drop it, Riley. When I need your advice, I'll ask for it. Morgan, what's your business here? I thought you might sell us some ammunition. We had a little brush with the Indians yesterday and consumed quite a bit of powder. Red Cloud's engines are at peace with the white. Sorry, we haven't any ammunition to spare, Morgan. Captain Morgan. All right, Captain Morgan. You can get no ammunition from us. You have a whole wagon load of it. Consigned to Fort Phil Kearney intact. That's an order, if you know what I mean. Exactly. I'm an officer, Lieutenant. Oh, sure, sure. I, I just had a peek at your army through the glass. Howdy, black folks. You better mosey along there, black boy. Them lovely looking flowers you got. They ain't for no black man's stewing pot. Even that old manger-looking rooster? No, sir. 
What are you doing following that white man around just like he owns you? That's for Massa, Captain Morgan. What's your name, black boy? I guess my name is Morgan, too. I've been one of the family ever since I was a picking of it. Lieutenant, take my advice and keep a sharp lookout for Red Cloud and his Sioux Indians. Apparently, you have nothing but advice, mister. Wearing that uniform, it might occur to you that your opinion isn't needed here. You have plenty of spirit, ma'am. But I'd hate to see an Indian get that pretty hair of yours. I've always been able to take care of my hair. You sure have. And it looks beautiful right where it is. Instead of handing out advice wholesale, Captain Morgan, Maybe you'll listen to some of mine. I'll not only listen, but I'll take it, if it's any good. Go back and get a pardon and quit playing soldier. That's nice of you, but I don't want a pardon. And I'm not the one who's playing soldier. I'd consider it an honor, ma'am, if you'd permit my detachment to escort you safely to the fort. Thanks, but I'd rather risk Indians than rebels. You're right, Miss Strong, especially Miss Ernst. <laughs> Captain Jennison knew how to treat them. Oh, Jennison, so that's it. Lieutenant, this man is no soldier. Government contractor, what of it? So you knew Jennison and his men, the Red Legs, bandits, that raided both sides. That's about all from you, Morgan. That's just a start, Riley, if my guess is right. Lieutenant, I have no sympathy for your Yankee government. But I'd rather have Red Cloud on my back with a thousand warriors than one of Jennison's men sneaking into my confidence. I'm capable of handling any situation. Don't concern yourself. I hope so. And here's some more advice, this time to you. Keep away from my outfit. My men have reason to remember you, Red Legs, and not very favorably. You being competent, Lieutenant, to uh, draw your own conclusions. Guess it'll be most along for the Captain tells my hide. You let that white man do that? Don't I belong to Master John? I was emancipated. <laughs> you all better look out, Bodrat. You have a mighty fine animal there. He looks like he's part thoroughbred. Northern gentlemen wouldn't force their conversation on a lady. And southern gentlemen can't be considered impolite for admiration at a respectful distance. And I'm not at all nearsighted. Maybe you wouldn't mind if I talked to Ginger. You have a mighty fine I would say she's all thoroughbred. Maybe I'll be seeing you at Fort Phil Kearney. Good day, ma'am. Good day, gentlemen. A little band of rebels disturb you, Lieutenant. You must have thousands during the war. Ah, it isn't the rebels. It's Red Cloud's warriors, and a lot of other things. I must deliver that ammunition safely to the fort. And if anything happened to you, anything, I'd be in a bad way with your father. How are you going to do it with all those rebel soldiers around? I'll take care of those rebels. And these Yanks, too. You'll be up there in the morning. Or uh, tell them to keep out of sight till I get this guard away. And uh, watch out for them rebels south of us. Better make your raid from the north. Hmm. So they wouldn't sell, huh? No, they're pretty bitter against our people. You know, wouldn't be much of a job to take that powder away from them tonight. Dave, from now on, it's law and order. If there's any fighting, it's going to be the other fellow's fault. We've ridden all the way from Missouri to locate a spot where we can settle, send for our families and start over again. And we have to be at peace with our neighbors, red man and white man. You're right, John. You know, you're always right, no matter what I think. Don't overestimate me. <laughs> we'll uh, camp for the night down below. Huh. Well, I bet you picked the perfect spot. Claire, Mandy, you haven't had your mind on your work all evening. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, which is it? No, ma'am, or yes, ma'am? Tell the truth, Miss Lucy. I reckon it's yes, ma'am. I just can't disremember that Toby, the low-down chicken stealing. You mean that black boy who was with that rebel? Yes, sir. Like him? Who, me? Oh, no. 
I was just thinking how that black boy keeps a bragging all the time about Captain Morgan. He just keeps saying what fine folks the captain is. Miss Lindsay, what do you all think about that white man? I'm not in the habit of thinking of impudent confederates. He may be impudent, but he's mighty fine looking. Captain Morgan, he look like quality. Don't you think so, Miss Lucy? Southern ladies and northern ladies have different ideas. Yes, but both of them have mighty good eyes. Don't you be impudent, Mandy. Toby, I don't want you to steal any more chickens. Yes, sir. But this fowl done surrendered. Now, how on earth can a chicken surrender? Don't you understand? Toby talks chicken language. You know, chicken thieves end up in jail, Toby. You uh, sure you got that salted and peppered just right? Yes, sir. Well, bring her on. Mmm, smells good. Yes, sir. Don't quite taste good. I understand they passed a new law in Washington that colored folks from now on get one of the drumsticks. Am um, that so? Is that what the war was about? Oh! You can't ride in there. I'm going to see Captain Morgan. Oh, wait, I'll have to find out if he'll see you. Good morning, ma'am. I want my horse. I haven't seen him. You stole him last night, and I want him back. Well, uh, what kind of a looking animal was it? You know what kind it is. The one you talked to yesterday. Oh, that one. Yes, that one. Part thoroughbred. <laughs> I see you remember my very words. Suppose I do. Oh, nothing, except uh, I must have made some sort of impression. You did. A very bad one. Oh, you're just in time for breakfast. Hey, Toby, uh, serve the young lady some of that chicken. Yes, sir. You're a chicken thief, too. Here, have some of it. It's good. I don't eat stolen chicken. Well, if you say it's your chicken, it wouldn't be stolen. I'm not here to breakfast with you. I came for my horse. I'll uh, speak to my men and see if they've seen it. They've seen it, stole it, and I want it. Is that clear? Clear, emphatic, courageous, and if I might add, exactly perfect. Excuse me. <laughs> so that's why we didn't get an early start. Babe, she thinks I took her horse. Did you? No, but it's the first time I've ever sympathized with a horse thief. <laughs> Take the men and see if you can find it. And don't hurry. And uh, if you can hide this horse... You can gallantly come up to the ladies' assistance. Dave? And... I call that mighty fast thinking. Miss Lucy, she leave for that rebel camp. She said that that rebel captain stole her horse during the night. I'd hate to be in your boots, Lieutenant. Something happened to Colonel Strong's daughter while you're supposed to be protecting her. We'll go right after her. They're a bad lot. Maybe we better take the men with us. Teton, mount up and follow me. Oh, Ned. do you steal a day? That's the second this morning, according to your count. You had your men take it while I was talking here. You're wrong, ma'am. My men are not horse thieves. Perhaps they'll find both your horses. If you think you can deliberately keep me in a rebel camp, you're mistaken. <laughs> I demand to be taken back. Well, if I loaned you my horse, you'd only lose him, too. My nag carries double. I'll never ride with you. 
Hey, where are you going? It's a long way back to the wagon train. It's very dangerous for a woman to be out in this country alone. There's snakes and Indians, and bears, wolves, packs of wolves. A wolf pack will follow a woman for miles and miles. So I see, and one of them rides a horse. <laughs> Sounds like a panther, ma'am. Where'd you get that horse? I found it down there underneath the bridge, tied to a sapling. Did you see anything of a young lady? She's with my Captain Morgan. When last I seen him, just headed over toward your Yankee camp. Where's the rest of the rebels? Message on soldiers? It's all out. Look for that lady's white pony. Chances are he's lying, Lieutenant. We'd better hang around in case any of them show up. Uh, we haven't got any time to lose. Let's see if they're back at camp. Excuse me. How's that girl manned this morning? <laughs> Bring that horse along. <laughs> the engines don't get the ammunition wagon. What Indians? I don't know, Miss Lucy, just engines. With their head full of chicken feathers and everything. Must have been millions of them. Let me handle this. Pull yourself together and tell me what you saw. Somebody holler engine and this young girl just died right into the wagon under the mattress. Well, didn't you see the fight? No, sir. I kept my head kivered. Where were the soldiers? The soldiers? They'd gone down to that rebel camp looking for Miss Lucy a long time ago. And, uh, Riley? He'd go, too. There couldn't have been many Indians, and they must have known just when to strike. What's going on here? Where's the ammunition wagon? Indians raided the train when you withdrew your guard. What do you know about this, Morgan? Possibly this red leg could give you more definite information. You and your gang wanted that ammunition. If you'll only look at the barrels, maybe you know Indians have been here. Yeah. Engines in cahooks with a lot of Missourians, you dirty rebel. Why, you renegade. I'm sorry, I forgot a lady was present. There's no time for personalities, Riley. I've got to get to the bottom of this thing. I just left your camp. Your men weren't there. I sent them out to look for Miss Lucy's horse. The one that uh, strayed away last night. I must get that ammunition back. I'm going to take the trail right now. And leave your train unguarded the second time? Well, what would you do if you were in my place? I wouldn't be in your place. If I'd been on convoy duty, the wagon wouldn't have been taken. If you hadn't stolen my horse, the lieutenant and his men wouldn't have left here. May I ask at whose suggestion you withdrew your guard? Miss Strong had to be found. That was my first responsibility. And your second, the ammunition wagon. You bungled both. An eventful morning for an ambitious young officer. Lieutenant, quit playing soldier. Take this young lady to the fort and let a competent officer with enough men recover that ordnance wagon. My offer to uh, escort you to the fort still holds. One experience with you as an escort is enough. My answer to that and anything else you may suggest is thank you, no. You're quite welcome. I take back the thank you. Good day, ma'am. The man's crazy. What if that Yankee lieutenant did think we had something to do with the raid? What can he do about it? That fort needs powder, lead, guns. If Red Cloud has it, he can wipe out every white family in the district. It's our job to recapture that wagon and turn it over to the fort. What? I mean it. We can't let Indians keep it. Well, it's all right with me. And I'm sure it'll be more than all right with the colonel's daughter. Let's get started.
Let me look at you. My, you are beautiful. Just as your mother was when I married her. Daddy, it's good to be with you. It will be weeks before I can stop looking at you. It'll be months before I let you miss a single chance. Flattery hasn't turned your head. If I could be seen through your eyes, it might. I really haven't had enough. We'll have plenty of time for that. <laughs> yeah, how is this, Lucy? Hello, Lieutenant. How are you, Colonel Strong, sir? Well, Ronnie, I see you came through all right. Any sign of Indians? Sir, I... I regret to report the loss of the ammunition wagon. What? It was taken by Indians, sir. Any casualties? Four civilian teamsters. Couldn't you protect the civilians? I wasn't there, sir. I'd withdrawn the guard to go in search of your daughter. Withdrawn the guard? What do you think a convoy is for? Call Captain Fetterman. Yes, sir. That'll be all, Riley. Yes, sir. Well? No big trouble. Got wagon easy. Uh, and, uh, money? Mm hmm. Captain Fetterman, it is your business to bring that ammunition back to this fort. Take the trail at once. Yes, sir. Keep a sharp eye for ambuscades and don't penetrate too far into Red Cloud's territory. I would like to accompany Captain Fetterman, sir. Lieutenant Gilchrist will accompany you. And if you should encounter that fellow Morgan and his rebels, I am relying on you to use your best judgment. Don't provoke a fight. I understand, sir. Good luck to you. Indians are pretty good, but an Indian war hoopah isn't a chance against our rebel yell. Right, right, right. You, know, you know what I was a chief habit? He was so scared he jumped right from under this war bonnet. <laughs> Come on, man. How about three Indian war hoops for old Chief Rain on the face? Okay. Oh! 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 <laughs> and then, just in case there are any more Indians in the neighborhood, maybe we better give them a dose of rebel yell. Yeah. Yes. You. How much? How much am I offer for this real Indian war bonnet? Real feathers, real paint, and genuine beads. A thousand dollars, Confederate money. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing doing. One Yankee dollar. Oh, that's more like it. One Yankee dollar? Come on, man. These hats come high. They get them off of eagles. <laughs> John. How much do you offer? Afraid I can't use it. Well, a fellow that sends this back to his sweetheart's gonna make a big hit. I haven't anyone to send it back to. Huh? How about the colonel's daughter? No, she wouldn't want it from one of us. Never saw the time a woman couldn't use a new bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're gonna play hero, John, you might as well go all the way. All right, I'll take it with a guarantee. Money back if it doesn't work. Sold. The big chief knock him dead. <laughs> Ammunition chase of Morgan. Conqueror of all Yankees, Indians, and women. <laughs> that for <conqueror> celebration. <laughs> hey, music, Toby. Yes, sir. I followed old Marsh Robin. The four years near about. I wounded in three places. And saw them on the ground. I was a I've heard that plenty of times before. That's the rebel yell. Come on, man.
Who are you? Captain Fetterman, United States Cavalry. Well, uh, what are you afraid of? Come on in. Wait a minute, men. Don't resist unless I give orders. We may get that fight we've been looking for. You're John Morgan? Captain John Morgan, Confederate States of America. This is Lieutenant David Kirby, my second in command. Uh, Lieutenant Gilchrist and I have met. Captain Morgan, consider yourself and your men under arrest. I don't recognize your authority, Captain. My cavalry outfit have you completely surrounded. <laughs> I've been surrounded before. I think you realize the odds are against you, Morgan. You men give up your arms. Keep your arms, men. I'm giving orders around here. What do you want? That ammunition is the property of the United States Army. It was stolen. I recognize that. In fact, I went quite a bit out of my way to recover it for uh, Lieutenant Gilchrist. Will you take the wagon to the fort? Not we. I. Lay down those guns, men. Keep those guns, men. Captain Fetterman, you'll leave my camp immediately. When that wagon is delivered to Colonel Strong, I'll deliver it. It's my business to take that wagon to the fort. Orders, Captain Morgan. <laughs> I admire your courage, sir. But I'd hate to report I was forced to open fire. You might open fire, but you'd never make the report. I'm going with my command to Fort Phil Kearney to deliver that ammunition. We recovered it by force. We'll deliver it in peace. Let there be no misunderstanding. Follow us, if you wish, at a respectful distance. The incident is closed. Good night, Captain. Morgan stood pat, broken fire. No chance to compromise. Your orders were not to provoke a fight. I permitted him to bring the ammunition in. And Captain Morgan made no effort to break away from you on the way back? No, sir. He never gave us a second thought. Sound judgment, Captain Fetterman. I commend you. Your men lost that wagon once. I didn't want the job of recovering it the second time. A court of inquiry will take care of all that. I hope you won't be too hard on Lieutenant Gilker, sir. Withdrawing his convoy wasn't exactly military, but uh, very chivalrous. At the proper time, in the proper manner, the exact facts of that case will be determined. But getting down to brass tacks, Captain, your presence here with your men in uniform adds another problem to this post. <laughs> Between the Indians, your men, and that freighter, I should imagine your time is pretty well occupied. You don't seem to appreciate your position. You show a new brand of gratitude, Colonel, to a man who went out of his way to perform a duty in which one of your own officers failed. You can hardly expect me to comment on your rather acid criticisms. As for gratitude, well, you should be content to know that you and your men are free to go where and when they will. And furthermore, if you're going to live out in this part of the country, you'd better keep in mind that all former rebels are looked upon with suspicion, especially those who fail to go through the formality of surrendering. Colonel Strong, these men are fugitives, subject to military detention until they apply to President Johnson for a pardon. I understand President Johnson spends most of his time writing pardons. I wouldn't like to overwork him. It's too bad that the President didn't know your attitude before he issued this one. Ran him around yesterday. It's dated May 29, 1865. His general amnesty proclamation. The part that concerns you is this. All ex-Confederates below the rank of Colonel are granted full pardons. I can get along without his pardon, Colonel Strong. Well, he made you a present of it anyhow, Captain. Get the men ready and we'll push on. Oh, uh, Lieutenant. Captain Fetterman will go with you. He will show you every courtesy. Thank you, sir. Oh, Morgan. You fool. How'd you happen to let Morgan get that wagon? Looking to get money before they come. Mm. Red Cloud would think I was back of this. He suspects all white men. This is dangerous business. Joe, we got to get rid of Morgan and his gang. Mm. Say, there's a rebel over there. Maybe some use to us. How long you been with this rebel outfit, Wade? Well, thank you. 
My name's Wainwright. I still remember when it was Wayne. You heard me. Wainwright. Don't bluff. I know Wade and everything about him. What do you want? Oh, keep your shirt on, man. Maybe I can arrange for you to keep that name. Take the advice of an older officer and try to brush that chip off your shoulder. Colonel, that chip is a kind of southern birthmark. You couldn't budge it with a crowbar. <laughs> Am I intruding, Father? No, no. I'm just having it out with Captain Morgan. Well, it seems to have agreed with you both. Good morning. You haven't lost any horses this morning, or have you? Not yet, but it's early, and you're still in the neighborhood. <laughs> but seriously, Morgan, of all the place to start a colony, you've hit upon the worst. Red Cloud's warriors are continually on the warpath. It means danger, suffering, privation. Worse than the Civil War. We'll face those dangers. But your families? You have your daughter here, and your men have their families. Yes, inside a fort. Our people are used to danger. They'll endure it a while longer in order to have a new home where we can live under our own laws. Our law is rather important out here, Morgan. I'll be the law at my place. There's that confounded chip again. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. And good luck. This tastes like one of them old cottontail wraps to me. Trouble you is, you ain't never eat white meat before. You just used to what flies over the fence last. What are you all doing in this part of the country anyhow, big boy? My master says he's gonna build a big town about 20 miles up the trail. Hmm. Um, ready? That's me. So long. Mighty low from down here at Fish Air Force. Hope you'll be coming back this way soon. I sure is. All on board. In this wilderness, we've made a world of our own. In the few months we've been here, we've built houses and planted crops. Because we've remembered the first law of the West, do not deal in firearms with Indians, we've remained at peace with our neighbors at the fort. More and more colonists will come to us each year. Uh, John, what is tell the men the good news? All right, Dave, you tell them. Man. Your families arrive tomorrow. They come here as far as the fort with a government wagon train. That means added responsibilities here at the colony. Don't forget that, men. That's all. Dismissed. Dave? Dave, the thing is done. It's real. The colony is established. When the families arrive, it'll be the beginning of what someday will be big and fine and great. It's your dream coming true, John. Dave, I couldn't have done it without you. Always ready, always there. <laughs> Anyone could have done what I did. I only followed out your orders. Yeah, that's what you think. Say, Dave, hmm? you will have to take charge until morning. Oh, you're going to the fort, huh? Yeah, uh, on business. On business again? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Now I'm wondering. What? How is your dancing? Confidentially, it's improving. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Red Cloud and his warriors will kill every company of soldiers in the country of Powder River. Warriors of the Sioux, send your runners to every village, to every teepee. Tell them the time has come. Give me sword. Everything go like clockwork. Oh, this fixes everything the way we want it. Nobody left to talk? Well, this time they get everything. Remember this and get it straight. Red Cloud's outfit was led by a white man. And the sword was found after the raid. Uh. This will be the end of Morgan and his rebel outfit. The boys can hardly wait until their families arrive tomorrow. It must be wonderful having those you love come way out here to make a home. I suppose you're going to tell me you're lonely out here. I am, most of the time. And that you'll never marry, never have a wife? No, not that I won't, but I'm afraid I can't. Then you have ideas. Oh, distinct ideas, way above me, elaborate, you might say. Then there is a girl. Oh, and what a girl. You know, the only real one in the world. What a delightful distinction. Can't you confide in me? Can't I? Say, I've been wanting to, dreaming about it. And about the million reasons why she'll never say yes. Oh, then you've asked her. Hmm, no. That would be a good beginning. Well, you see, uh, she hates rebels. I can sympathize. <laughs> and then she thinks I steal horses. I understand perfectly. But does she know you bring them back? She does. And that at odd times you join a wolf pack and chase frightened young women? <laughs> She knows that, too. Well, then, being a very comprehending young woman, I should say, with a proper approach, everything should turn out all right. Lucy, you mean that you'd really marry me? How can I, if I'm not asked? Hell strong. That wagon train you sent up to Fort C.F. Smith from here last night was captured by Red Cloud. Yes. Fetterman just reported. But how? An Indian scout. We have every detail. Not every detail. Not this. Found after the raid. Indians don't carry sabers. That proves that a white man engineered the attack. It's a Confederate saber. So it is. There's a name on it. Captain Fetterman. Colonel, see that Morgan is brought to me at once. Yes, sir. But your father, we may have trouble getting his consent. Father has never denied me anything. <laughs> You've never asked him for a rebel captain. It's the last thing I thought I'd ever want. <laughs> well, Captain Morgan, if I am just outside the door, sir. Captain Morgan, Colonel Strong would like to see you right away in his office. I wonder what he wants. I don't know, but it's a good time to tell him what we want. <laughs> and that Miss Lucy ain't doing herself no good all the time sashaying around with that rebel captain. All the white ladies are mighty proud to be sashaying around with the Morgan. You want the Morgans too, ain't you? So sure, are the Morgan. And you ought to be mighty proud to be in my company. Who, me? I'll just modificate it, that's all. Hmm. I guess you know now who's been playing with them engines, who's been stealing ammunition, and murdering good Union men. I think you'd better leave the room, Lucinda. 
John, there's something very important to ask you, Father. It's, it's very private. Would you mind asking Mr. Riley to excuse us a moment? I don't know what you're talking about, but Riley will stay right where he is. This is rather personal, Colonel. Did you ever see that before? Why, yes, it's Dave's. He's carried it for years. Exactly who is Dave? Lieutenant David Kirby, second in command of my settlement. My closest friend. He must have lost it. Where'd you get it, Colonel Strong? Where was your man David Kirby today? At the colony. I left him in charge. Come to the point, Colonel. Why the questions and uh, why the saber? Morgan, I accepted your declaration of good faith and intention. I permitted you and your men to locate on the Bozeman Trail. That was a mistake. Possibly you couldn't prevent us from settling on any spot we selected. A wagon train was attacked today between your place and Fort C.F. Smith. Red clouds broke loose again. A powder wagon was seized. Another powder wagon? And Riley reporting. Colonel, that means something to me, even if you're too prejudiced to see the point. Riley was not there. He never is! Colonel, what's Dave's saber to do with an Indian attack? It was found after the fight at the scene of the raid. Only the fact that you were here prevents me from ordering your arrest. But you'll have to turn Kirby over to me for trial. That means a court-martial. Right. And then the firing squad. He wouldn't have a chance. It would be downright murder. John, do you accuse my father of deliberately planning murder? Military murder, Lucy, but murder just the same. And you're the man who so lightly pledges his word. Now, wait. This involves something bigger than anything else in life. It's a matter of loyalty. I represent the law in this territory. You represent the law, sir, here at Fort Bill Kearney. I'm the law at my settlement. If Dave is guilty, he'll be punished by me, not you. Unless your man Kirby is turned over to me by daybreak, I'll send Captain Fetterman and a full troop of cavalry to bring him back forcibly. If you resist, my men will annihilate your entire outfit. If your soldiers set foot on my property, they'll be treated as trespassers. There's nothing more to be said. But they found your saber. That's what convinced the colonel. All right, let him be convinced. I'll take my chance. Chance? What well, boy, you can't take a chance when you haven't got one. Sure I have. I'll the fort and stand trial. Trial? Why, well, they've already convicted you. They put this on you, Dave, because they knew you were my friend. They knew we wouldn't submit. It's a plot to break up our settlement. Well? Have you any plan? Not a plan, just an alternative. We'll stand together and fight. Fight? Against Fetterman and a full troop of cavalry? Oh, they'd wipe us out. We came out here to be free. I'll not let you sacrifice yourself. John, you, you've forgotten about the families coming tomorrow. Do you want them to find a graveyard instead of a home? Yeah, a fine home with the shadow of your murder in it. I won't let you do it, John. I'm going to take the chance of that trial. Hope! You leave this place and I'll put you under arrest. But I won't bring on a fight. That's final. It's my risk. I'm going to take it. No, not when you haven't done anything. All right, John. You forced me to tell you the truth. Truth? Sure. I never admitted even to myself the war between the states was ended. I still hate them. Oh, you're crazy. Colonel Strong's right. I was in that attack on the wagon train. But I don't believe you. Thanks, John. That's what I hoped you'd say. You see, I, I wanted to go to the fort, give myself up, and then you'd always believe me innocent. Do you hear me? I don't believe you. John, look at me. Have I ever lied to you? Oh. Now you know, John. Don't try to stop me. I'm going. Sergeant Hampton! Put this man under arrest. He doesn't arrest? leave this place. Sure. I helped Red Cloud kill those Yankees and take that powder wagon. Dave! Don't you know what you've done? Now you've taken it out of my hands. Your orders are to bring in Kirby. Take plenty of men. If Morgan resists, bring them all. Randy will accompany you. Yes, sir. You know, Cap, one good bullet and get their leader. And then the rest of the gang will skip the country. Captain. Sir, you understand my orders? Yes, sir. That's all.
Father, you know Captain Morgan will resist. Please give him time to think over your demands. Think of Louis thinking here. He'll have a soldier's chance to meet the charges in a soldierly manner. Are you in love with Captain Morgan? That, that's what we wanted to tell you last night. Morgan's on the other side of the fence. Bitter, unreasonable, quarrelsome. An enemy of the United States government. So you see, my dear, that makes him an enemy of us. And that means we must both forget him. Lieutenant Kirby left the fort yesterday for about three hours. He said he was deer hunting. He left me in charge. Anything else? Except his confession to me in your presence that he was guilty of the charge. That's all. Men, you've heard the evidence in the prisoner's confession. Do not be influenced by sympathy or fear. If you believe Lieutenant Kirby innocent, do not be urged in your decision by threats of armed force. We're not afraid to die. Conviction means death before the firing squad. Hawkins. Guilty. Clark. Guilty, sir. Forrester. Guilty. Fraser. Guilty. Polk. Guilty. Johnson. I guess he's guilty. This is not a matter of guessing. It's a matter of a man's life. Guilty. Williams. Guilty, sir. Wainwright. Wainwright! Guilty. Van Zandt. Guilty, sir. Lieutenant David Kirby? Stand up. You've heard the verdict. Have you anything to say before sentence is pronounced on you? Nothing. <clears throat> Nothing, sir. It is the judgment and sentence of this court that you be delivered into the custody of Sergeant Hampton and that you be immediately executed before a firing squad. Johnson, Williams, Cole, Hawkins, Van Zandt, Polk. Forward, march. I had to see you, sir. It can wait. No. Not this. Dave Kirby 
isn't him guilty. He didn't do it. What? I say he didn't do it. How do you know this? I stole Dave's sword. Riley made me do it. He's been selling powder to the Indians all along. When Red Trap gets that train today, he'll wipe out everybody. Our families will be the first ones massacred. Hampton. Yes, sir. Get the men in the saddle. We'll have to dodge Fetterman's cavalry, sir. No, we'll need Fetterman to help us. Wainwright. Fetterman's cavalry, sir. The Indians ambushed us, killed every man but me. Oh, it was horrible. Fetterman massacred on his way up here? Yes. What about Colonel Strong? Didn't he send reinforcements? They couldn't. Every trooper was with us. 81. If we only had those new breech-loading rifles that are coming today, we might have stood them off. Coming from where? The wagon train from the east. That's our train. Our people. We've got to get to that train first. We've got to get those rifles. It's the only way we stand a chance against Red Cloud and his thousands. Come on. Toby, you've got to do the most important thing in your life. Yes, sir. Ride to the port and tell Colonel Strong the Indians have killed Captain Fetterman and all of his men. Tell him to close those gates and protect his people. He's not to come out until I bring that wagon train in. Now, you mustn't fail me, Toby. Yes, sir. I was a moving, Captain John. This man will go with you. Yes, sir. Come on, man. How long before we get to the fort, mister? Well, we're getting pretty near, I reckon. I'll bet your brother will be surprised to see you, Julie. I hope he won't be angry because they came without letting him know. Oh, I'll bet Dave told him. No, I asked you not to. Move over. You've had that looking glass long enough. How do I look, Julie? Well, under the circumstances, I'd say you look fine. Wouldn't it be terrible if that man changed his mind and wouldn't marry me? <laughs> It'll be cheaper than sending you back home. Sister Julie. I'm 
Where's Dave? Where's Dave? Where's Dave? Where's Dave? Where's Dave? You girls get back in the wagon. We're being attacked by Indians. Now run, now run. Man, you put the cartridges in here. You open it like this. I hope it'll be a big fight. Keep down. John said it's Red Cloud and he's got thousands of Indians. Thousands? the convoy work. He'll do, Hampton. This is the most important wagon of the lot, boys. The girls are in We there. won't let an Indian near it. It doesn't hurt, John. John, tell Dave I love him. We were going to be married. We wanted to surprise you. You didn't know. Dave and I were going to be married. He didn't tell you, did he? No, he didn't, Julie. He'd have died before he told you, when I asked him not to. You'll take good care of Dave, won't you? Yes, Julie. You won't let anybody hurt him. No, Julie. Come closer to me, John. Tell Dave. Captain Morgan, Colonel Strong sends his compliments and... Tell Colonel Strong. Dave Kirby was tried by his own men and executed. Tell him the boy was innocent. Tell him you left me holding the dead body of the girl he was to marry. Tell him that girl was my sister. That's all. gathered here today on this most solemn and sacred occasion. Do you take these women to be your lawfully wedded wives? And do you pledge your troth to them in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness? 
to live with them and cherish them according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? We do. Go on, John. Unless you don't want me. The men will now repeat the words after me, using their own names when I say John. I, John, take thee, Lucinda, to be my lawfully wedded wife. I, Harold, take thee, Mary, to be my lawfully wedded wife. Say, honey, what's your name? Mandy Johnson. Oh, I, I, Toby, take thee, Mandy Johnson, for my awfully lawfully wedded wife. And I do promise and covenant before God and these witnesses to be thy faithful, loving husband, in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, so long as we both shall live. I, Lucinda, take thee, John, to be my lawfully wedded husband. And now, inasmuch as we've expressed these vows according to the laws of our colony, and by authority of the laws vested in me as your leader, I now pronounce us husbands and wives. <laughs>